All right, David Aria of Octane Jesus here with uh, iDesign.com and BroGraph.com interviewing Zachary Corzine, who just went on and did an amazing presentation, man. Uh, yeah, what's up? How's it going? Good, man. This was uh, this is my first NAB and first presentation. Oh, no way. And it's been absolutely incredible so far. It's been so much fun. So, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah your presentation totally, like, blew me away. You've, do you've got this whole, like... MoGraph thing, combining it with Octane. So, like, tell me a bit about. So, where do you live? Like, what's uh, you know? Did you get your start with a company, or are you freelance now? And and like, what's your place in the whole world of motion design right now? Yeah. So, um, I currently live in San Francisco. Um, I have a background in design. I went to college in San Francisco for design, and then I was at an advertising agency full time for like a couple years, and. We ended up getting some clients on, like Google, that needed some animation stuff, and we had no one to do animation. So I was kind of like, okay, I'll try doing that, and realized how much I loved it and how much fun it was, and uh, transitioned from there, from design into motion design. I was with them for about a year, basically kind of like one-man uh, animation department. And yeah, that's my jam, too, is that one-man thing. That's yeah. so much fun. Which yeah. is like a blessing and a curse. And like one end, it's like amazing because I feel like I have a solid understanding of like, you know, from initial concept to like final delivery. Right. But then like on the other hand, like, you know, with the advertising agency, it kind of got to the point where it was like, you know, you're you're this one-man team. And you're isolated and maybe, isolated. yeah, and you're not necessarily like collaborating with all the people you'd want to be. Like, you don't necessarily know how to you know patch into a bigger like pipeline yeah. but yeah there's definitely some awesomeness to being like able to be this uber generalist you know and do it all yourself like yeah. and that's why I love like being a motion designer it makes you more of like a creative director to some degree holy yeah because yeah. and so basically all those kind of factors led to me deciding to leave and go freelance so I've been freelance for about a year and some change and um yeah, it's been it's been absolutely incredible. Are you liking it better as a freelancer? Yeah, man. Awesome. I, I feel like like this last year I've been the most productive I've ever been because yeah. it just frees up so much time. And so like a lot of the, the this presentation I gave on like personal projects, personal experiments, is like all stuff that I've done since going freelance because I've like been really able to like focus and like dive in head first into like my work. And mm -hmm. um, when you're full time, like I was doing some freelance. My first freelance gig I got picked up by the NBA because they actually saw some of my work on Instagram and I was doing like some social videos for them. And, um, like, since then, it's just been, like, you know, I've just been, when you were full, when I was full-time and then also freelancing, it's like, you, you know, you're doing nine to five, and then at the end of the day having to go home and freelance, and you just don't have energy to really, like, get a sense of yourself as a designer and your work and what you want to do. And mm -hmm. so since this last year of being freelance, I feel like it's been the best year of my career and the most productive I've been, yeah, and, man. like, it's it's been incredible. Yeah, it's been Yeah, that's awesome. Amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And, and like doing those like Instagram projects, like it really frees you up to do like these unique experiments, which is much of what your presentation was about. You know, yeah. clients aren't necessarily going to pay you for that until, like you said, you do the work and then, you know, somebody hires you to do that work. It's almost like a catch 22 where, yeah. you know, you want to make the cool thing and then people like are attracted to that art and then hire you to do that cool thing. Yeah. You know, so that's really cool that you're doing that and that freelance is, you know, benefiting you like that. You know, yeah. have you read Joey Corman's book? Uh, I have. That yeah, book is that. amazing. Everyone needs to read that book. Yeah, that absolutely. is like the Bible of going it's freelance. Bible, yeah. yeah, I still need to implement so many of those oh, like too, techniques, yeah. but, like, but even it's just implementing a tiny amount of what is in the book is so beneficial. I was freelance for like six months before that book came out and like I was doing great, but like reading that book is just like supercharged and it's been amazing. Yeah. So if anyone's thinking about going freelance, that's like, yeah. you know, the Bible. It's so cool to just, like design your own life and, you know, like know how to come to clients with like, here are you know, here's my boundaries and my conditions. Like, I don't want to work weekends. I don't want to do this yeah. kind of stuff, you know, and, and it's a really cool life to have, yeah. And it's awesome because you just have control over yourself and your work and like yeah. you're a brand yourself. And like you're saying, you, you know, if you're like, you know, when I was full-time at an advertising agency, it's like, you know, you work overtime, you do all this stuff. When you're like freelance, they're like coming to you because they want your work. And so you exactly. can set the parameters and you can yeah. set the, you know, the, the, the conditions around that, so. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. But yeah, super recommend that book. It's, uh, totally it's so great. great. So can you summarize like your talk for us? That It kind of blew my mind because like, again, you're combining these very MoGraphy techniques that I didn't know could work so well with Octane. Like I've seen them, you know, with like physical render, but like even that I've never seen anybody use that uh, color shader node in Octane. And I often like am afraid of those like Cinema 4D nodes because oh, they same. slow down yeah. the process a little bit. But that's really cool that you can get like you're using one procedure 
procedural noise to like, and you're using the computer to give you all these emergent properties, basically, yeah. you know? So this one procedural noise is driving not just like the displacement deformer, but also, uh, what else, like the scale, scale when they're, you know, and then the, the color all, and like the material and shit like that. So that was super cool. Yeah, I, I'm not sure when they added the uh, MoGraph color shader to Octane. I think yeah. it was like a few versions ago, but um, I, because like I have a background in design, I feel like a lot of my work kind of like has that approach to it. And I, I'm like obsessed with like procedural stuff because yeah. whenever I have to make something editable, I just panic. Like I want, always want to have like a back yeah. out. Yeah. And so like procedural stuff is uh, just really exciting to me. And I think also why uh, procedural is so exciting to me is because like it allows the work to surprise you, right? Like yes. it's, you totally. are setting up the parameters, yeah. you let it play out, but like it comes back to you alive. Like I, when, yeah. that's why I think 3D also really excites me because when I was doing 2D animation, uh, when I first started doing animation, I was doing After Effects stuff, and right. like, you're it's so hands-on. You have so much control over it, which like you don't get as much of like discovery. You don't get those right. like really like That's exciting moments exactly. where it feels like you're like. Dr. Frankenstein and you've like brought something to life, right? Exactly. That's how I felt like, I don't know if you saw my recent forest tutorials or whatever, yes. yeah. but like that, awesome. that stuff is so weird to me because you like build this forest and whatever, but it's like semi-procedural and then you're like, whoa, I made this whole freaking world and I can explore a camera through it and I don't even know what's there, yeah. but I can find some cool composition like a photographer. You haven't discovered it yet. So the computer is giving you like, it's doing the hard work for you. And then like an artist, you get to go in and discover what cool shots are in there. Yeah. It's pretty weird. It is. Yeah. And, and and like you're saying, that's the stuff that just like super excites me. So a lot of my work is like kind of these procedural projects where setting up parameters and then kind of just seeing how they play out and stuff. And it is like, it is it is this, yeah, weird, you feel like a kind of overlord thing where you're like yeah, building totally. out this thing. And like you say, you're going through the forest and you like find something. You're like, I didn't know that was there. I didn't, exactly. I didn't place that there. Exactly. Um, so a lot of my work is like kind of a blend between at least like personal projects i'm giving a talk um on wednesday on my like freelance commercial production workflow so it's more like you know kind of commercial work which is uh, like you know this one's the funner one like, yeah this one's like the fun instagram like experimentation yeah. mad science stuff for sure yeah. yeah and then that that cloner like the blend stuff i hadn't seen that before how you were like blending i'd seen the cloner used as a blend but then using the plane effector to drive you know that uh what is it the like, um, yeah, the displacement, but what's the parameter, the MoGraph, like effect clone, that's the one. So like where you're transitioning states, you know, and not just states. I had no idea you could transition using a mixed material in Octane, transition between two different material types. That was super cool. Yeah, that's like just, you know, kind of where the experimentation exploration comes in. And like, it's cool that like that type of stuff, like, I learned that when just kind of playing around and just like seeing like, oh, does this work? Cause I've, like you're saying, I've been scared of so many standard Cinema 4D nodes. Cause you like plug them in, I'm like, this is never gonna work. No, yeah. But like the, like you plug them in and then it works. And you're like, oh yeah. shit, this opens like a, a huge like doorway. And now I've used yeah. that on like different client projects and stuff. So um, I think it's like, you know, spending the, the time to just kind of do these different ex experiments and stuff has just been like super valuable. Yeah, I only recently realized that like the layer shader, you know how you can use Cinema 4D's default layer shader? You can totally use that in Octane too, like for certain things. Yeah, like for scatter, you know, I've been, at one point I did this project with scattering uh, a bunch of trees onto displacement, but then you can use, like you can take like the displacement map and use it to displace the trees so they conform to the displacement. And then you can cull the tree line, like so it, you know, you don't want the trees necessarily on the very tops of the mountains, right? Because that's not realistic. So you can call the tree line based on that same image, right? So you put that in a layer shader. And so it's not just a hard line. You can then pipe in a noise, a procedural noise as well to get patches. And so the line's not super clean and also getting the trees off the edges where they don't belong, where they're all janky angles. So like, yeah, you can put that into a layer shader and then, you know, mix a bunch of noises with image textures. So that, that kind of stuff, I'm still like, like exploring and discovering more about Octane yeah. is crazy. I haven't even made that tutorial. Like, I mean, so I've made the two nature ones, but yeah. this one I want to do like a snowy scene, like with like, you know, using World Machine and like those, yes. those trees and, and stuff. But yeah, just another example of like the weird, like combining the C4D default stuff with Octane is, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And like Octane is like, 
you know, I n played around. No, I um, I played around a little bit with Cinema 4D in like college because there's like a couple courses that we did. But I just like didn't dive into it too much because like I'm so ADD that like having to send to render and then wait and then fix a parameter was just like didn't really work for me. And then yeah, I hated it so much. So Octane's literally the reason that I got into 3D because I think like Ash Thorpe was posting about it when it was in like alpha, and so I started using it uh, super early on. And then like as soon as I boot. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, that was like the thing that like made me start using 3D because as soon as I started using it, it's like, oh, this is, I'm like this is with my like ADD wavelength. Like it, it fits, it fits nice. Still the biggest game changer that I've seen, and like, uh, yeah, same, same for me. Well. That's actually a really interesting story, what you just said, because I haven't heard people say, I got into 3D because of Octane. Like, I had to go through the slog of physical render and, like, staring at those buckets forming slowly, and just bang your head against the wall, and then, like, give up eventually. Yeah. But when Octane came along, I'm like, oh, this can actually make this artistic and, like, an explorative process, like what you're talking about, yeah, you know? I so that's really cool. I had one of those instances in, in the college class where um, I had to render out this, like, super, you know, 300 DPI poster for a project, and uh, I almost failed the class because it was the final and I sent it to I couldn't render it on my machine I sent it to a render farm and even I you know had the settings all messed up so it's like I had like a diamond and it was just like refracting a million times and so um, I, the render like almost didn't finish before the final and almost failed my class so that like, completely turned me off of Cinema 4D yeah. and then when I started using Octane I was like oh this yeah, is a game changer yeah I'm like I'm back in yeah uh, but yeah and I took I took a look at some of your your work too I love the uh, like ad you did for blank repository with the uh, exploding uh, you know bread and all that stuff it reminded me of that scene from inception where all of the you know all the fruit and stuff at the cafe explodes so um, yeah maybe talk a little bit about that project and also how did you do like the water did you use hot 4d or was it just like simple displacement deformer yeah I um, I'll be talking a little bit about that project um, on, th on Wednesday I think and um, yeah, so they like came to me and was like kind of just like blue sky brief of like whatever you want to do with all our uh, scans. And so I kind of like the concept behind it was just like kind of how it felt when I first like scrolled through the website of just like all these beautiful foods, like this online buffet that's like fresh for the picking and they're all kind of frozen in time. So I tried to like, you know, illustrate that. And then I'm glad you brought up the Inception thing because that's like totally what I was inspired from. That scene is like amazing. So I was like, um, I think when I was building, I was kind of building up the buffet and then like I, uh, I either like watched that movie recently or something but I was totally inspired by that. Um, but I think the, I think the water was just like kind of standard displacement stuff. Um, but like, yeah, all the, all the, and that, and that project really like pushed, um, at the time my machine to like the, the limits because I had to load all like. 70 different food models with all the textures and everything. So and the Forester stuff that you had going on in the background. It was a big scene. And I am I like those. I'm gravitated towards those, like, more fully realistic, like, epic scenes, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, I feel like a lot of, like, my personal work is, like, more kind of designy, just, like, kind of, like, you know, uh, design colors and, and then compositions. But, like, a lot of my, like, client work, I'm the same way. I love, like, natural environments. I love, like, kind of, like, having this kind of bigger scale of things and stuff. And even that, that pro like, that project was... Um, maybe like a year and a half ago and like seeing it, I was like putting together a presentation and it's like, it's always the thing where you're like looking back and you're like, oh man, I could have done this like so much. It still looks beautiful and like that, it shows like your versatility that you're able to do these like more like designy things and then also expand to these, you know, larger scale projects, which, so that's something, you know, that I would encourage a lot of freelancers to like try to get out of their comfort zone and the trap with Instagram is, is plateauing and making the same thing over and over. It's really fun to explore and like get into a style but then also you want to reach outside your comfort zone sometimes and like try to create something very different like maybe emulate somebody else's style or yeah. something like that yeah honestly and and I think um, that's where like you know once again like the ADD is kind of like advantageous because it's like I'll do one thing and then I'm just like I'm kind of bored of this I don't want to do it again so then it, you know it takes like six more projects to kind of get back to the thing and then by that point you have like some new insights on how to approach whatever style you're doing again so I always try to kind of cycle out uh, different looks and different like approaches to things because I just I honestly just get bored but uh, it's a good point um, saying that like you know if you know find people that you're inspired by and you know and like kind of like create work that's in the same realm as that or just you know there's a ton of different ways to uh, kind of just refresh in yourself rather than get like stuck in stuck in a corner you know yeah same thing goes with like software like it's often very difficult to push yourself to learn new stuff but it looks like you're you're like 
pretty versed in Turbulence FD, I noticed, based on your reel. And like, I was curious how you did some of those fluid sims as well, whether it was like real flow or whether you've gotten into Houdini at all, because that, it seems like you're branching out to a lot of different software. And for me, that's like much more, like I'm often lazy and I just want to down more and more tutorials that are like Octane, Cinema 4D, because I can breeze through them. But it, the hard work is sitting down and really learning some new software and getting outside your comfort zone that way. Yeah, I have a friend that's a, uh, a in a band, like a guitarist, and he told me something right one time that really stuck with me of that like there's a difference between jamming out and practicing right like there's like it's like what, what you're saying it's like always so hard for me because I used to just like jam out like you're just like doing your thing you're just having fun making different stuff and that's a huge difference compared to like sitting down and, like practicing chords or like right. practicing scales like that's not fun like that's not like the fun stuff and so if you you know it's like doing a nice blend in between the two but like same thing it's I'm like sometimes get lazy and it's like really hard to expand it to different things but those uh, fluid sims and uh, smoke sims were, was actually Houdini. I uh, yeah, I've been I uh, about a year ago I think I like dove into it and started learning it. But like I got busy on some client projects and so I haven't used it for a while and it just like all goes out of your brain. So I'm gonna, I'm like as I have more time again I'm gonna like dive back in because Houdini is just like super powerful and even just for like those volumetrics and fluid sims it's just so fast. Like the sim time is really fast and then just export it to Cinema 4D. And it's just like, you know, compared to, I'd use real flow a bit, I use Turbulence FD, and like, they're just not as, I don't know, it's just, it, you it's, don't get the same quality level. exactly, yeah, you don't get the same quality level, you don't get the same uh, speed, so it's like, it's worth, it's worth the time investment. Uh, what do you I need to do it, I can't, like, I tried to get into Houdini for like a few months at one point, and I, I hit a wall, but I think that they've, that the program has become more user friendly in the past few years because I'm seeing motion designers really embracing it. And I think there's more training out there for it for motion designers. Back when I was using it, it was like around like 2014 or 15 and it was more VFX, like all the tutorials were for VFX workflows and so it was even more intimidating for me. But I think I, I need to get back into it. Yeah. And, and like Intagma has like amazing stuff. It's so, like they, they like all their tutorials I think is like most of what I've learned and just like even on um, SideFX's website they have like so many awesome tutorials and like yeah and like you said I feel like you know there's just so much documentation now that it kind of makes it easier because like if I had to just dive in by myself I would never yeah, never be yeah yeah but, I'll definitely I'll have to get your talk onto my mega octane resources you know page because like yeah. so cool that you've just joined the you know community as an educator as well that's yeah. so awesome and your your talk was super clean and like very uh, easy to digest and really really well organized and laid out so that was awesome thank you man I'm a huge fan of you guys and this is awesome and love octane so thanks for having me Sweet, dude. thanks man yeah take care yeah see you guys later <laughs>